Hey there. If you're here watching this video, it means that you probably saw a thumbnail with some wild looking vehicles on it and you wanna know what's going on. Well, guess what? I wanna know what's going on too. So I'm gonna do my best to try to explain to you what's going on. You see here at Sparks Motors, we're a very busy shop. Non-stop, constantly got projects in and out. It gets a little frustrating because some of my own personal projects that I wanna get done kinda get put on the back burner. Well, today we're gonna put an end to that, at least kind of. The wizard is here to do a trick. What's the trick? You're the wizard. Sitting down on the job. That's the trick? That's the trick. As I was saying before the wizard appeared, uh, it's time to make some of our own fun projects a top priority, but I can only do one right now. So I'm gonna show you three different builds that I've been wanting to do for quite some time now, and they're builds that you guys have wanna see as well. Show us what you got. The wild build idea that we have for this Dolphin helicopter, right here. The wild idea that we have for this Freightliner motorhome is right here. So right here we have a 1975 Peterbilt 359. This truck is iconic. Truck enthusiasts love these things. It's got the awesome round headlights. It's got that long hood and it's just awesome. And I have a plan that I've been wanting to do since 2015 with this truck. And it's right here. And I need every single one of you to vote to tell me which one do you want to see. Do you want to see a drag racing Dolphin helicopter? Do you want to see a murdered out, slammed, lowered, awesome, gang banging Freightliner with the Cummins in it? Or do you want to see a Formula One style Peterbilt 359? I need you guys to drop a comment below right now and let me know which build you want us to start on and which build you want to watch a full video series on on this channel and the Sparks Motors channel. Do you see Diesel Dave anywhere? I need you to grab those wheels and tuck. Uh, what are you doing? Trying out the new Manscaped stuff. On a duck. Yeah, I got the whole Performance 4.0 package. It's a game changer. Listen, the fourth generation trimmer features cutting edge ceramic blades so it reduces all shaving accidents. And a 4000K LED light so I can get into all those hard to reach places without having to worry about causing an accident if you know what I mean. And the best part is, is lawnmower, it's waterproof and wireless, which means I can take my duck literally to the pond and shave him anywhere I want. You thought the lawnmower was good? Well, the Performance Package 4.0 also takes your grooming game to the next level with the Weed Whacker. It features a 7,000 RPM motor with steel blades that are gonna get rid of all your weeds. You know what I mean? Like, little for you, little for me. I mean, no more nose hairs, no more Ear hairs. I probably should have done that in the backwards order, but that's okay. The best part, Dave, is I can hook you up and everyone watching this with 20% off, free international shipping, and two free gifts. That's right, my friends. You heard correctly. All you gotta do is use promo code SPARKS to get 20% off plus two free gifts. So click the link in my description below and go get your free gifts and discount right now. Manscaped, making it smooth. Turn around. <laughs> that's just soaring through it. That's amazing. Go ahead and not leave those two alone again. Now you may recognize a few of these different vehicles from different videos like the Delphine video, right? This was Delphine number three or two and a half. This was the one that we basically got as a full spare parts machine designed not to ever fly again because well, all the components are like timed out. It's not, it would be more money to try to get this thing flying than it's actually worth. So basically what we have is a beautiful Delphine airframe with a lot of good parts that we'll probably take off. But next up, we've got the Freightliner RV, this beautiful, masterpiece of a motorhome that we drove home from California a few months ago. It was a beautiful Facebook marketplace find that you guys sent over to us and helped us find. And uh, I love this thing, literally love this thing. It is like very well built, clean inside and out. We head over here to big rig land to Mr. Peterbilt 359. This truck right here is a very popular, highly desirable classic truck. I can't remember which, I might as well pull it up. I can't remember what year it is. So as you guys can see, uh, these things kind of got tucked away into Neverland and uh, Neverland means that it means it's never gonna come into the shop land because we get so busy. And like I said, I wanted to change that today because 
We need to, we need a good change of pace. And a lot of you have been requesting like build videos and I don't wanna just do a regular truck build series because for me, that's not that exciting to show on YouTube, but I feel like building a drag racing helicopter or a murdered out, lowered, slammed, beautiful Cummins powered Freightliner motorhome or a Formula One style Peterbilt 359. Well, I feel like those, my friends, would make good video series. But So as you guys know, I am a helicopter enthusiast. I love everything helicopters. And it's got a lot of good components. Like this windshield right here is like $10,000. Each one of these doors and panels is worth, you know, five, 10, $15,000. So there's still a lot of good parts and pieces here. So some of that stuff will be stripped off and will probably be kept as spare parts or sold to other Dolphin operators. But my vision for this is to make it literally a drag car. So basically, I don't know if we would put it on a truck frame or a drag car frame or try to integrate the suspension somehow into the helicopter airframe, which could get a little tricky. More than likely, it's gonna end up sitting on like a picture like a F-150 Lightning or, or one of those like really fast, is it Lightning? So picture it sitting on like a, a Dodge Ram 1500, like the Rumblebee, like the fast truck chassis, or maybe a big beefy muscle car frame. The idea is to have this thing go to a race somewhere, probably Freedom Factory is where it would be debuted because Cletus likes fast cars and he likes helicopters and I like helicopters and I also happen to like fast cars. However, I don't know a ton about racing, as you guys already know. Especially drag racing. It's never been my strong suit. I've never spent a lot of time in that industry. And quite frankly, I just don't really know the ins and outs of that whole business. However, I got a lot of friends that do, including the one and only Cletus McFarland. So if we do go this route, I'm gonna have to lean on him pretty heavily. Uh, I know he's got some connections with like Texas Speed and different, you know, we got helicopters, helicopter noises everywhere. Um, so this helicopter is not gonna be able to do that anymore. It'll fly, but mostly just in a straight line down the drag strip if we end up doing the build. Just know that as you're looking at the rendering, the build could drastically change from there. But the overall concept is a really fast car designed to go basically in straight lines. I mean, imagine you're at the drag strip on a weekend, right? Now here they come, the pro stock finalists. And you see a Camaro and a Charger roll up to the start line and boom, they race. And then you see a couple of other fast cars and you see different cars and you're like, oh man, this is cool, but it's just a bunch of cars racing. And then you see a Dolphin helicopter roll up. We'll try to maybe make like mini rotors on it so it looks like it has the full rotor system. We'll put the stabilizers on the rear. Like this thing will look as complete as possible. We'll paint it. Like the thing about these builds is I, I don't want to do a rat rod style build, which means get in and just kind of like piece something together and make it look like it's unfinished because I feel like if we're going to go this far with the project, we got to do it the right way and make it look clean. Uh, many, many of you have probably seen the videos on social media of like old uh, private jets with the wings taken off being used as limos. That same type of concept, but instead drag car. And maybe, maybe it becomes a limo. That's actually not a bad idea because drag car doesn't make a lot of money. Limo, we could actually rent out and make some money with it. Now the wheels are turning. If you guys want to see the helicopter be turned into something that drives down the road, vote now. Man, a limo would be kind of cool. Hands, do we make it a limo instead of a drag car? Or a limo drag car? All right, let me know. He's gonna get back to me. Okay, so next up we've got the Freightliner motorhome. As you guys know, this thing has a very, very special place in my heart. After driving it home from California, just had one hell of a cruise. This vehicle was built, um, as far as I know, by an old Boeing engineer. And somehow, some way, he decided to get a brand new Freightliner semi-truck and mesh it with like an Itasca, I think it was. It was one of the old motorhomes back in the day. But when this build started, it was a brand new semi-truck and a brand new motorhome, and he spliced them together. And he did a really, really good job. As you can see, all the body lines are clean. Like most old motorhomes you see, you want to take them out and do demolition derby with them because they're just ragged and you know falling apart. <laughs> This motorhome is a literal piece of American history, like one of a kind, nothing else like it out there. However, it is currently sitting on like an old uh, Chevy or Ford chassis with like a 350 carburetor or maybe throttle body injected gas engine. No power, well, not enough power. It needs love. It needs to be brought back to life in the best way. And I'm not talking about modifying it crazy. The only thing that I would kind of maybe do is go with the theme that the original builder was going with, which is, low and sexy you know that's different from what we normally do because normally our builds we go 
big, high, we make them work. We, we design our vehicles to go out and to actually be used off-road and to be beat on. This one, I'm thinking a weekend cruiser, car show cruiser, still make it campable, but also put it on some sort of air ride suspension so it can be slammed and go all the way down the ground or as close as possible. Slamming a vehicle to make it go all the way to the ground is much harder than it looks. Anybody who builds low riders knows what I'm talking about. But basically, this would be a full restoration. This is a big project because I wouldn't just do the outside. My thought is drop it on a Dodge Ram Cummins chassis so it's got a nice uh, common rail engine, probably uh, automatic transmission, maybe uh, throw an Allison behind it, uh, completely redo the interior. So originally I was thinking about maybe throwing this on a Dodge Ram four-wheel drive chassis and making it four-wheel drive. But the more I look at it, this thing doesn't, it's not made to be four-wheel drive. Like if you look at those body lines and everything, this is meant to be a low, sweet, heavy highway cruiser. So we'd probably put it on a two-wheel drive chassis, get it as low as we can, get as much power in the Cummins engine as possible, and just clean it up, make the inside livable and campable, because right now, the doors don't even work. I forgot how much I love this thing, actually. I might drive it home tonight. <laughs> Look in there, just take, take a gander. Uh, I mean, it's got enough seating in there to do like horseshoe style seating. You can see. No. Yeah, you would. And then finally, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Peterbilt 359. This is a 1975 truck. And uh, like I mentioned, Peterbilt people and semi truck people in general love the 359. It's just an iconic truck. It's got extremely bold, but very sexy and like elegant at the same time body lines. It's just classy, not elegant. Classy is the word I'm looking for. Um, this was like, 1975 was like the glory days of trucking. Like we're about halfway to Watergate City. Well, we're gonna keep on trucking towards that 7-6. Like 70s, 80s, that's when tr bandit trucking was happening, outlaw trucking, smoking the bandit, those guys, like that's when trucking was like Hollywood. So this truck kind of is like a throwback to that era. And I know there's probably a lot of semi-truck people that are gonna watch this and be like, you're gonna do what to that truck? Now, let me tell you, this truck, is probably never gonna go over the road again. Um, it's a lot of the technology is outdated and old and it's not the type of truck that you wanna jump in and go work with or you know haul heavy loads with because it's an older rig. Doesn't mean that it wouldn't do it. In fact, right before we bought it, it was being used as a water truck with a big, you know, giant, probably three or 4,000 gallon water tank on the back. And that was taken off when we bought it like this. And the reason I bought this truck is because back in 2015, I was cruising through social media and I saw this rendering pop up of a Peterbilt 359 that was built into like a Formula One style car. It had the big uh, racing slick tires on it and the image, I believe it had independent suspension. It was lowered, it just looked absolutely menacing. It was like, you know, the, the combination of vehicles that you never knew you needed until you saw it and you're like, oh wow, I gotta have that. So a lot of guys have come close to doing something similar with uh, semi trucks. They've built kind of rat rod style semi trucks and there have been lowered, you know, racing style trucks built. But I've never seen a semi truck, especially a Pete 359, that's been built into something that actually looks like a Formula One race car. And now, granted, it's not gonna be a Formula One race car. I don't even know how fast we're gonna make it. I don't know if we're gonna focus more on the suspension stance and just overall styling and take it easy on the motor or whether we're gonna go crazy with the suspension and stuff and then end up getting so far into it that we gotta throw some serious power at it. Because right now, it's got a big old, I think it's got a cat in it. I have to double check. It's either a cat or a Cummins, but it's probably a big 250, 300 horsepower motor. If we want this thing to be fast, we'd probably have to swap that out or do a serious build on it. But the idea here is get it as low to the ground as possible. Uh, this truck has an aluminum frame from the factory, which is kind of crazy. It's like this damn near inch thick. It probably is seven eighths or an inch thick um, factory frame that's aluminum and that allows the frame to be lighter and they make it thicker so that it's as strong as steel. And kind of the whole concept behind it was to avoid rust and corrosion. Um, now aluminum does corrode, but it doesn't rust. So you'll see areas in here where there's some corrosion, but overall there's not a lot of rust. The reason why I bought this truck originally because the body was super clean. 
The body's not so clean right now after being bonked around in our storage yard for the last several years. So I'm hoping that I can find the body panels necessary to be able to replace this, replace the other side, and make this body really straight, really clean. And we would shorten it up quite a bit. I'm thinking that the rear axle would probably sit somewhere right in here. Um, so the rear of the truck would be shorter or maybe just as long as the front of the truck. So it's very proportional looking. And like I said, very low, hoping to do independent style suspension on it, which is actually much more difficult than you might think. This geometry, suspension angles, the differentials, all that kind of stuff. So might get a straight axle in the rear. Um, I don't think we're gonna try to go all wheel drive with it simply because then you're talking about a whole different world of, of drivetrain components that are really expensive and time consuming. So most likely would just be rear wheel drive and then we'll figure out what transmission and uh, what engine to put in it. Definitely gonna stick with the diesel, even though diesels uh, are a lot harder to make power out of, at least you know quick responsive power that's durable and doesn't get super hot, but we're gonna do it. So I'll tell you right now, the Peterbilt is what I'm leaning towards. The reason for that is I'm on a huge semi truck kick right now. I've always loved semis. I've been, you know, driving them my whole life, but recently I've been shifting away a little bit from other types of builds and more focusing on semis because it's just been fun for me. It's a new challenge and a new focus. And you know, my buddies at K2 Express let me borrow their blue W900 and that truck has kind of inspired me. And I got my cab over builds. So I'm kind of in the semi world right now and I would like to be able to continue to focus on building cool stuff there and prove that we can not just build pickup trucks and other crazy vehicles, but also big rigs. So that, and it's been the one that's been on my list to build the longest. Like I said, it's been there since about 2015. So this build is about eight years old now, whereas this one's only maybe three or four months and same with this one, three or four months. So they got to pay their dues. But the vote, gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, the final decision rests in your hands. So what I need you to do right now, process this information, try to digest it, think about what you've heard, think about the options, and keep in mind that the things that I've outlined today, we're not 100% set on those. So if you see something here that maybe you think could be a better build idea, let me know, drop it in the comments below. The whole purpose of this guys is so that we can do this build journey together. I know there's a lot of you guys that would love to go out and you know build one of these dream crazy vehicles or something completely different. However, time, resources, budget, and just life doesn't allow you to do that. So in doing this, I'm hoping that we can all do it together and you guys and myself can live vicariously through these builds. So with that said, I need you to please, I'm gonna stop talking because I've been talking forever. I need you to please go to the comments right now and let me know if you would like to see the Dolphin build, the Freightliner build, or the Peterbilt build. Drop the comments below. I will let you guys know in the next video or two what we decide on and then we will get this thing going. Keep in mind, to do a build this extensive, like something this in depth, this probably be a minimum of three or four videos on my main channel, Heavy D Sparks here. And then outside of that, probably another three or four or five behind the scenes uh, builds on our Sparks Motors channel, which covers more in-depth shop process. So if you guys wanna check that out, click the link in my description below. That channel is growing like crazy and uh, the boys are putting up some solid content on there. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get those boats in and let's build something absolutely crazy. Another thing is we are hiring. We're looking for uh, mechanics, somebody preferably with experience driving truck, fixing equipment, fixing cars, fabrication, jack of all trades, kind of somebody who's really qualified to do all that stuff. Not 100% necessary, but that's kind of what we're looking for right now. That'd be the ideal uh, spot. So if you're interested and uh, you think you are qualified to come work and you have a lot of experience, email me info at heavydsparks.com and uh, we will consider you for the position. When I started this video, I was originally thinking drag car because that was kind of the, the joke that we had about this thing. But the more we sit here and talk about it, old Hansel had a good idea. Like this could actually be pretty sweet as a limo or just a cruiser. There's no real business opportunity with building a drag car other than building it for YouTube and then probably just parking it because drag cars are almost always broken. Instead, we could do a fully like 
decked out interior, make it super clean, and then rent this thing out as a limo. Imagine going to prom, right? Little Tommy asks little Becky out to prom. Little Becky's not sure. She's thinking, what's Tommy got to offer that you know Jim and Mike and Billy have? And you know, what sets this guy apart from everybody else? And then he says, he says, you know what, Becky? This is our ride to prom. And hands rolls up with a dumb and dumber uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The suit on. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. And then and then they realize that he actually can't be the driver because of some paperwork, weird stuff that happened years ago. And it's like, <laughs> okay, we'll find another driver. But still, it all works out. And Becky's impressed. And next thing you know, they fall in love. They get married. They have a kid. And you know, circle of life type stuff. That's what a limo helicopter gets you. So another another thing about the RV build is I would like to keep the retro styling not necessarily the exact same paint job maybe it might stay the same just refresh it or we might update it with you know different colors or something but kind of make the whole thing just new again i'm telling you guys the body on this thing is so freaking straight and just so it's a perfect candidate to do something crazy with and then again this is a show vehicle it goes to car shows it goes to different events you guys will love it, it creates a lot of revenue everything that i do guys just know this even though we make great money, we do really well, we have great lives, I still don't like to just spend money just to spend money. The, you know, the frugal boy in me that grew up, you know, wondering why my mom was making my clothes and my friends were getting new clothes for school, always thinks like, how can we just not spend money but still have a good time? So uh, everything I approach from a business standpoint, thinking how can this actually turn into revenue for the company rather than just a bunch of money thrown away, which I think a lot of you guys sometimes think we do because of our videos and they make it look like that. So I'm gonna to try to do a better job explaining to you like that's not the case. Everything we do has, well, most everything we do has a business purpose behind it. Man, airport's busy today.